very special broadcast of Ascend TV, live on the autism spectrum. I'm your co-host, Keith Halperin. Uh, and I'm Will Burnick. And our very special program this week is live from Oracle Park. We are uh, at Autism Awareness Night for the San Francisco Giants. We will be interviewing Will Clark, a number of other uh, very special uh, guests. And, but, but before we do, what I'd like to always ask this Will, what's with <laughs> your shirt today? <laughs> This, this shirt is my giant, is, this is my giant shirt. Since we're interviewing Will Clark at a game, I'm, I'm, gonna be, I'm wearing my giant shirt to support the Giants and, and cheer them on tonight at, their, at the real game. We are here today at San Francisco Giants Oracle Park where it's Autism Awareness Night and we are standing right here with Ella Clark, Will Clark's daughter. How are you today and how, is, how are things going? I'm great. I'm having so much fun. The weather is beautiful. It's an amazing day, and we're here at the Autism Awareness um, event, so it's going really great. Great. Wonderful. So I'm Wesley Lamb here with Ascend TV, and we are here with Trey, um, Will Clark's son. So Trey, what do you love the most about Autism Awareness Night here in Arco Park in San Francisco? Well, I, th I think I like... Um I think I like to come here because because uh, we get talk to talk about uh, Giants baseball a lot and uh, we get tell stories about about dad and stuff like that and uh, supporting uh, supporting autism awareness and yearly and um, and we're getting ready for a Giants win all the time. How are the San Francisco Giants been helping people on the autism spectrum? such as partnerships and donations? Well, I think, you know, something, I think, um, you know, but I think uh, dads have, I think the Giants have been doing a really great job with with uh, helping and helping kids with disabilities, not not just autism in general. It's just, just uh, you know, just other disabilities in general, like cancer, mental health, and something like that, and right, raising awareness. And I think I'm really appreciate I appreciate the work that the Giants have done lately, and uh, and thank you. And I want to say thank to, thank you to the Giants organization and let's go Giants. What do you think has been your biggest accomplishment during your time with the Giants so far? Well, um, biggest accomplishment is uh, biggest accomplishment with uh, the Giants is being. Uh, is being here uh, supporting the Giants and uh, my my dad uh, being here for like I don't know maybe 15 years or 14 something like that and um, I'm really thankful for uh, really thankful that he gets to work in San Francisco a lot and uh, and support this cause and and that's about it. I'm here standing with Mrs. Clark and Mrs. Clark. How are you doing and how are the autism feels going with you? Well, um, feels are great. We, um, we are uh, happy to be here. We just got in last night and uh, we're enjoying the weather so much and enjoying seeing you guys again for since last year we, we saw you and you interviewed uh, both of our children and um, yeah, it's just a it's just a great event. Uh, part of the proceeds from the uh, from the tickets go towards Autism Speaks, and um, usually they let uh, they let Trey and Ella uh, hand out the check, which is a lot of fun. So before the game starts, that's just wow. Um, how do you get more included than that? How how does it get more highlighting than that? And uh, it's always wonderful to interview you, your daughter and your son, and uh, and Will Clark. Thank and you. thanks for being here Thank today. Thank you. Y'all do such yeah. a great job, and, and so good to see y'all again. We are standing here now with Sophie Layers. And Sophie, Hi. I understand that this is your first time. You're just about five months in. And yeah. how is it feeling now, and have you been learning things? Yeah, it's feeling really good. This is my, I'm a, I'm a lifelong Giants fan, so this is kind of a dream come true for me. Um, my mom actually uh, was a speech therapist for 40 years and she worked at an inclusive preschool for 10 of those years. So I got a lot of experience volunteering um, with this community. So this just really brings it to light for me and means a lot. Yeah, That's great. And 
And would we agree to say that, you know, we, we understand the language of autism people and, and uh, that they're like the new, uh, how would you say? Sorry. No. But you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. It's, I, I, if we're still going. I mean, it's a, yeah, beautiful, are, it's yeah. a beautiful language. Um, I think it's a language that a lot of different people need to learn. Um, but also on the community's end, I think it's an opportunity for you guys to educate others as well. Exactly. And it's not necessarily that we just want those who are, you know, not autistic or neurotypical. It's like, we're not trying to make them like us, you know, or so, but we want them to understand us and not make us exactly, you know, try to function like them because we're all generally different anyways. All of us, all yeah. of us are, no matter what your background. We all have different jobs. We all have different voices. And Absolutely. so, and more importantly like well very all importantly in, in inclusion or so yep 100%. yeah I and agree i'd say you. over over half the world now positively understands that and we just stick to that kind of group and that yeah. is and that is because of the work that you guys are doing and continuing to do so thank you I say keep it going thanks yeah. oh thank you sophie yeah. nice talking yes, to you. you as well yeah. all right so here we are out here at the 15th annual uh autism night and uh, the San Francisco Giants are sponsoring it. It uh, benefits all the autistic community here in the Bay Area, uh, especially Autism Speaks and Innova. And I got some of my friends here that have been here for a long time. So y'all fire away, what you got going on? Hi, um, what, other than spring training, how often do you practice or train during the off season? During the off season, we trained pretty much every day after January 1st. So leading up to spring training, we were practicing for about two months before the season started. And um, if you could, if you could play in a different position on the team, what would it be? If I could play in a different position, it'd probably be in the outfield because uh, I'm left-handed and I'm sort of limited to the places I could play. What do you think has been your biggest accomplishment during your time with the Giants so far? When I was with the Giants, uh, I homered in my first at bat in the major leagues off of Nolan Ryan, so that was pretty good. And then also I got a base hit that put us into the World Series. So those are my two biggest accomplishments. Will, you've been involved with Autism Awareness Night, if not from the very beginning, from very early on. Over the last 15 years, how have you noticed changes? Well, the, the big part about the change is the number of people affected. Uh, you know, when my wife and I first got started, it wasn't as many people, you know, with autism. Now, uh, pretty much everybody, you know, throughout the country is affected in some form or another from autism. So it has become a big, big cause. Excellent, and we are so proud that you are our champion. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. I mean, I'd said it before, but you know, you get a chance to uh, have a stage and try to make a presence, and so that's what my wife and I have done for all of these years. And we appreciate the San Francisco Giants their support, and we appreciate you guys coming out and doing this every year. We're now speaking with Amy G. And Amy, can you tell us about your involvement with Autism Awareness Night and various activities here? I'd be happy to. So years ago, I work, I work for the Giants. I started working for the Giants in 2008 covering the team, and I got a chance to become friends with Will mm -hmm. Clark, and I met his son, Trey, and that is, for me, honestly, kind of when autism entered my world as well and getting to know Trey, and then I was asked to host the Q&A with Will, and we've been doing it, I want to say, like seven or eight years in a row. It's one of my favorite nights. I love the support that it's getting. I love how people are being educated about autism and learning to let go of a stigma connected to autism. Excellent. And we are so glad you've been able to help us out with this over the years. It's my it's, pleasure. You know, we've seen it go and grow, and it's due to you. Oh. And, uh, I, it's the Giants, and it's Will. I just facilitate and ask questions, but it is a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so, Amy, the, the San Francisco Giants, has, has, has held their Autism Awareness Night for 15 years now. How do you got how do you got first involved into Autism Awareness Night? So I was fortunate enough to join the Giants and covering the Giants for NBC in 2008, and that is when I first met Will Clark, and he was one of my favorite players growing up in the Bay Area. And then all of a sudden, I got to work with him, and I met his son Trey, who is autistic and I was then asked to be involved in Autism Awareness Night and interview Will because we worked together and he knew me and it was a good fit and I was super excited to be able to be part of this great night. 
What was your favorite theme night so far during home games in the 2023 Giants season so far? Oh my gosh, you're putting me on the spot because I I don't cover the games anymore, so I don't come very often. But I mean, I think it has to be Autism Awareness Night, don't you think? That's the best night of the year. And what was your favorite SF Giants moment or favorite Giants World Series Giant World Series moment? So I'm actually wearing the 2010 World Series ring, and so I'll pick that as my favorite World Series of the three because it was the first and so exciting because it was new. My favorite moment as a reporter covering the Giants was in 2009. I got to interview, just like you're interviewing me, I got to interview Jonathan Sanchez who threw a no-hitter. We now have the pleasure of speaking with Greg Guinasso who's been very much involved in planning this event. Greg. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in this and, you know, all of the stuff that you did to help make this wonderful event happen? Yeah, so I started with the organization in 2018 and I was a member of the G team actually. So I was that guy who was helping throw out t-shirts and stuff and help out with these types of events. So as you guys walked in and got your items, I used to be that guy handing out the items and that's how I was first introduced to the event. And now, years later, I'm a member of the front office, um, part of the promotions and special events team, and getting to plan these events has been really cool. So since the off season, we've been planning for this one, knowing it's 15 years at the ballpark, big night, um, Friday night versus Boston, it should be a fun one. And um, really all off season, we've been planning um, not only for this Triples Alley event, but the night at large. So we have the giveaway up in, 334 with the t-shirts, the field ceremony later tonight, and a couple things on the board throughout the game, so. Excellent, it, it sounds like there are a lot of special things that you had to do for this very special event. Have you had any challenges or surprises in doing this particular one? Well, knowing it's the 15th year anniversary, yeah. we wanted to, you know, blow it out of the water and do some stuff that we didn't typically do. Um, like last year or the year before. And now that we're back on track after the pandemic, able to kind of put a little bit more um, behind it on the field and giving people more access to get on the field. So you'll see like, we'll have a few moments to say some words on the field tonight. Excellent. We'll have a first pitch involved with autism awareness and the play ball kids involved. So pregame should be fun tonight. Well, excellent. Well, again, thank you for all the effort you put into this and go Giants. Go Giants. Okay. We are here with the Taurus family right now. Tell us about um, what you love about Autism Awareness Night so far. And introduce yourselves, please. I'm Veronica Ortiz Torres. And I'm Arnold Torres. And we came, ironically, on the same night as Autism Night and are just thrilled to be included with this family and to be a part of the event. This is something that is near and dear to our heart and we are happy to be a part of this and truly appreciate appreciative of the opportunities this is unbelievable to see uh, everybody with such uh, happy faces uh, it's a very very uh, great event for everyone that's participating and it's given us some great ideas of things that we'd like to do in sacramento because the giants have the uh, AAA team in sacramento so we look forward to doing some things that I think will uh, will maybe bring you guys down into our neck of the woods. But you're not going to like the weather as much as you like it here because it's 108 <laughs> degrees in Sacramento. And it's uh, beautiful here. Yeah, and it's gorgeous here. So, uh, But it's this has been a great event, and you all have done a great job with your interviews and with your camera work. You guys are doing excellent. It's very impressive. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. Well, thank you, thank you very much, Taurus family. And one more question: um, Do you, why you, why you, why you like about, why you like the most about the, Sac the Sacramento River Cats, the Giants' um, minor league affiliate in Sacramento? I think that the River Cats are lucky to be able to contribute to the San Francisco Giants. It's a wonderful collaborative, and I think Sacramento is fortunate to be able to have the River Cats and be family with the San Francisco Giants. Uh, the Giants are, uh, the River Cats are a very good team, and they have sent up a lot of great players up to the Giants. So it's great for us to see the River Cat players playing on the Giant, uh, on the Giant uh, uh, team, uh, get to see them on national television, uh, and get to come to Sacramento, uh, San Francisco, and see them play here. So it's, it's again, we're just thrilled that this connection is made. 
what, what was your reaction when the Giants and the A's fans held a Unite the Bay event this past Tuesday during the Giants-A's game in response to the Oakland A's potentially relocating to Las Vegas? Well, we have a son who just graduated from University of Las Vegas, and while we like Las Vegas, uh, we don't want the Oakland A's to leave. Uh, we hope the Oakland A's will stay and maintain the rivalry, uh, and that is something that uh, I think a lot of people in Sacramento would like to keep the A's as well. To have two teams in the Bay Area, we're very, very lucky, uh, and that's something for us is a priority. We, we don't want to see them go like the Raiders went. But happy we still have the Giants, so go Giants. Do, do you have any family members on the autism spectrum? We've had uh, some in the uh, autism spectrum uh, in other relations in, in the extended family that we have, uh, but we want to support and are supporting many of the things that uh, the society is doing. And like I said, we have some great ideas to expand some activities that will give even more attention in Sacramento and hopefully raise some money uh, to provide services to people with autism. Well, everyone, this has been a fantastic program at Giants Autism Awareness Night for Sin TV. I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Jennifer Brooks. I'm Stacy Kennedy. Until next time, stay well.